introduction. So uh, this, the goal of this uh, demo is to show how easy it is. But if you have a hardware, then we can make a workshop in hackerspace that will take more time. We can answer <coughs> questions. We can make sure that your small projects work. And for these small projects, the first question is what kind of hardware you want to have. Probably you want something like this. This is so-called Papilio. We can see on the web page. It, it is pretty easy to buy. It's actually popular. You can buy something like this from... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I always make this mistake. It's just one L. Yes. On this web page, Gadget Factory, it's basically a simple Spartan board with shields. I would recommend either Oberon Project Shield, which basically has the VGA output and two PS uh, ports, so you can connect your peripherals. It also has the mass storage, so you can do most of the small projects. Yeah? Or Logic Start Shield. This is the example of Logic Start Shield. You have switches, you have LEDs, you have seven segment display, you also have VGA, and you have audio output, which is pretty practical. Also, you have alternative way of connecting power. There is also the third shield that you may want to have. This is the so-called gaming shield that has VGA and two slots that look just like VGA, they are actually joystick slots. And that would be the, the best ones. I, I would probably start with Operon Shield, but as I will tell you in a minute, as long as you have the right socket, you can do everything. If not, you just need an extra connector that converts the pins to your socket. Yeah? And that would be as for hardware. So I would recommend either Spartan 6, so Papilio Pro, probably. Uh, this is Papilio, just small Papilio. One. Papilio 1. Very practical for small projects, but it doesn't have its own memory. So, it, okay, it, it has memory, but it has like 40 kilobytes. And the Papilio Pro <coughs> has one megabyte. So if you think about visual projects or gaming projects, this is enough to have a mono display, for example. But if you want to have like color VGA resolution or HD, uh, HD resolution, that would be already about one meg would be taken just for the display memory. That is, that is important. Also, the common thing with FPGA is that you have less two or three bits for each color here. So you, you can count that, that you need this at least frame buffer memory. That, that's really bare minimum unless you use the character generator. But then the character memory will take some and it's of course monochrome. So now the hardware uh, considerations are uh, after us. The next step is of course really visiting, depending whether you have uh, Zilinx or Altera FPG. These are two most popular producers, yeah? So depending on which one, you need to visit either Altera.com webpage or Zilinx.com webpage and download the software. I have the software already installed. You basically need to download so-called ISE webpack from, for uh, Zilinx and uh, starter edition of the software for Altera. These are kind of free editions, so they are limited to working only on the producer's devices and they are licensed for all the producer's devices. So that should not be a problem. So this is the bare minimum. For the low-end FPGA is completely sufficient. And now I will show what happens when you download it already. So this is Quartus. So maybe I will start from... I, I will switch off the pin planner because that's a bit ahead of what we are going to do. Yeah. And it works on Linux? Yes, the thing is, 
there is a Linux version of all this software for these major producers and Windows versions. Okay. Even for Diamond or Lattice, there is a Linux version, but the problem with Lattice is that it, you have special to have special Red Hat version for it to work and it's pretty old. So I would recommend either Xilinx or Altera. Software works on, uh, as far as I know, like most platforms, one most popular, two most popular platforms, maybe not on Mac. But that's the only difficulty. But you can have the parallels desktop with uh, Linux. It will also work because the only way it contacts the hardware is USB. Yeah? And then when you start Altera uh, Quartus, you see the display like this. The first step that you need to do is to create a new project. I'm not sure, is it <coughs> enough resolution? Everybody sees it? Yeah. Okay, so I didn't need to zoom it. So you create new Quartus project. And then we call this a tutorial project. And there are two important things. This name is usually the same as this name. And this name you need to remember because it has to be also the name of the top level entity in the project. I will tell about it in a moment. And we don't use existing project settings because I, I want to guide you through few things that are usually difficult because then everything else is simple. So you create a directory. It's very similar to Zilinx, but I will also do it with Zilinx in a minute. So hmm, something happened. It's kind of slower than usual. Maybe I should just close the software. So in case it, it is slow, the, the beginning projects are very small, so we can just kill the software. And nothing bad happens. So it's really robust. So usually it installs in Opt Altera or Opt Zilinx, and you just need to call it from this directory. Yeah. And it started. Oh, th this is the Zilinx version. So, okay, we have a new project. Okay, we can also start it with this wizard. Yes, so, new project. As I said, this is the important part. Now we create the directory. Mm, no. Now we create an empty project. And we don't add the files, we will add them later. Now is the most important part. So the first thing you need to check is on the chip you have the code. And this, uh, as opposed to other chips, all the numbers here are important. So I will show the two examples. of chips. So maybe in the camera, if is it visible? The marking? And here. So these and this here, they have a special code that we will use in a minute. So whenever you have development board, sometimes if it's say Alteras or Zilinx development board, you will have a tutorial that tells you what to choose. But here you just need to copy this number. In my case, I know that it's EP for now for CE six and now it will be E22 C8. That's the beginning. That, that, that's actually one of the most difficult things. <laughs> Why? Because now you select the voltage, now you select the number of IOs and pins, now you set, set the arrangement of the banks, and if you select the wrong device and you compile your project, it will upload, it will connect random things to other things, or it will not upload at all. 
So that, that's the critical part. So now I select this device. I have some problem with this actually. No, it, it works here. Yes. And now is the, the, the things that it's best to keep at the normal settings. It just allows you to change the compiler and so on. So I would not recommend to change it. Here it should now display the Cyclone 4E, the kind of device. Also other things that are probably not that important. So now uh, the compiler knows which, to which device we target. And the next thing is to add the source file for VHDL. Oops. And it's also pretty simple. You just add the VHDL source file say uh, I have one prepared actually. It's a very simple file here. In the lead blink. So how this file looks like. It's basically VHDL code. If you Google for VHDL tutorial, it will tell you everything about the language. It has normal imports. Usually you import the IE stuff because it's the standard types and declarations. Second, it's declaration of the inputs and outputs of your uh, entity or your module. In the, this case, it's logic vector one of 8 bits, uh, both uh, switches that are mean inputs and less that are outputs. So this corresponds to what you see in, on this board. Here we have four switches, but I can always connect the pin to something that doesn't exist and hopefully nothing will happen. I mean, as long as the voltage doesn't exceed this, the nominal voltage that is accepted. And here we will say that depending on the state of the switch, we will set first four LEDs and the second four LEDs we will set to zero. So we don't care about four LEDs that much. So this is very easy to, to program and whenever you program it and you add this file to the project. So we add it to the project. We have to click add. Okay, we have added the file. The, the only problem is that we need to rename the entity here to new project. So that it's consistent with our project name. Okay, that would be all. Now we are able to compile our project or should be able to compile it. So now we can start compilation. And the next most important thing is twofold. So either we try to implement it directly in hardware and this is also the same in Zilinx and Altera. We have to, oh, there is some. Oh, so I probably have another file that also specifies new project. So I need to copy let blink VHD to the project directory and just keep it there. And besides that, yeah. That should be okay. So that was VGA tutorial for a new project. Yes, it probably generated another file that, that was responsible for this. So, 
when we make this uh, compile, basically, because I have only five minutes, so I need to, to skip this, this part of checking, we need to assign the pins. So in Altera, it's pretty simple because there is a graphical pin planner that has the pin numbers that correspond to the pins here. And we just assign the pins to the names that are uh, use, use, used in the VHDL top-level project. In uh, Zilinx, it's a bit different because we have so-called QCF file. Uh, and the constraints file, yeah. So, if we look, I have another uh, project here, and that's actually put in here. There, there, there is also the CSV version, but I didn't use it here. Mm, it generated the whole John documentation here. UCF. UCF, sorry. UCF. And that's the file that you should actually usually get as a template from your uh, board manufacturer so that uh, you know what is connected where, basically. In this case, I got it uh, here in this way. And it defines basically which pin name corresponds to which name. So on the left, you have the clock RX receiving TX uh, transmitting serial is Seg seven is se seven segment display anode uh, <coughs> dot point and so on. Then lock is the pin name, and then also there is an option of I/O standard or period for the clock. So basically, options of how to treat this pin. Sometimes, uh, so usually uh, FPGA have few sets of pins that are called so called I/O banks. And each I.O. bank can be used for either low voltage TTL, sometimes also high voltage TTL, so normal TTL. And you can also modify the behavior of the slew, so how is the edge detected, so that the, the, the voltage raises. And the drive, uh, in this case, selects uh, how strong uh, it is the, the pin is driven when it's output. Of, of course, you can also select the pin to be in out, <coughs> and then uh, depending of whether you mark it in or out, you will be able to to drive it as output as and as input. Of course, in this case, beware: do not set it as input and output at the same time. Yeah. Then uh, the second thing is simulation. So basically for each of your projects, besides pin planner, where you assign the names of pins, you are able to run the simulation tools after compilation. Here it's RTL simulation. In case of Zilinx, and I think in this case I will show the simulation in Zilinx tool. So th this, this is actually a project where I added, added few files already. I created empty project, added few files, and selected the target Zilinx device, also from these numbers, the same way. And then I can run the simulation. In Zilinx tool, the simulations are here as processes. So basically, you can click what you want it to generate here. Here it would be generating programming file for the device. 
and simulation tool is here. And then it should run the other program that is just simulating. Simulate to explicitly switch the mode in, in Zilinx. In Altera, we just launch the simulation tool. Here we have either a selection of implementation mode or simulation mode. Okay, I'm, I'm finishing. And here, when, when, we, when you select certain time, in my case, this is an example of VGA controller, like 100 microsecond, and you run it for this 100 microseconds, you will see how the states of the outputs change. You can also have a separate program that tells which inputs are set in what way. So you can simulate what is on the pin, uh, pins that are outputs depending on what you set on the pins that are input. And that's the, basically the whole philosophy besides knowing the language of EBHDL or Verilog or Clash, whatever you prefer as a, an implementation language. Yeah? So we simulate because some kinds of uh, the programs basically work too fast. In, in case of VGA, the, the step here is like the whole frame is generated for approximately, I think, 10 milliseconds. And that's the, the whole display. So. Each pixel is get generated for a few or tens of microseconds. So it's very hard to debug without simulation tool. Yeah? That's also true for the most protocols. If you write something to flash memory or read something from RAM, you need to do it pretty fast. So you, you check it in simulation tool that the pins, uh, the digital data is set appropriately. Or you directly go to the device and then you can see the LEDs, but maybe you, it's hard to see if they would change very quickly. So the, the first mistake that people usually do is setting the clock inappropriately. But if you have your manufacturer's uh, constraint file, that settles the issue. And that's the, the only thing that I would not have time to demonstrate, but if somebody comes for a workshop session, I will show you basically how you set the clock, both in, in Quartus and in Alteras tool and in Xilinx tool. So you basically need to know your crystal uh, frequency on board. In this case, I think it's 25 megahertz. In this case, this is 32 megahertz. You set it in the, uh, in the tool. And then whenever you want to wait for one second, you also set the constant in your VHDL file to be 32 megahertz, so 32 millions, basically. Or if you have more accurate uh, the crystal, then it will be a appropriate power of two that is closest to 20, 32 megahertz. That would be all. Now time for questions. about the price of those boards yeah. it would really indicate you know, it's not uh, it's so, yeah. so this, this is this one was uh, I think $70 yeah uh, the US. she was oh, actually the red one I bought it from uh, 12 gig okay. for $70 so what mm -hmm. uh, the yours are not uh, this uh, with shipment from China I, I got I got a stock of Chinese marked boards that are initially a little bit hard to work off because uh, it's hard to obtain the pinout. This is only a non-standard thing with, uh, with such a board. But uh, if you obtain the PDF with a pinout and if it decifier the decide Chinese, it's actually a very cheap board. It was $66 with uh, shipment. And this board actually has uh, not only the 
the Cyclone itself, which is a bit more powerful than this one, because for example, it has programmable clocks that you can change, and a bit more uh, of connectors, which I, as I said, for the hobbyist and for the initial uh, experimentation, it's very useful to have PS2, to have uh, VGA. So I suppose the, the, without shipping, the price would be 40 sync dollars. That's what I paid. <coughs> Okay, uh, we'll go for one more question, but uh, where is Andreas? Maybe you can start studying. No, so I can answer a question and yeah, I can help also. While, uh, so, uh, yeah. Brahim or Mina, could you talk a little bit about the FPGA group that we are also trying to start up? Okay, so we, we created a group on Facebook, uh, FPGA yes. Singapore, I think okay. uh, we named it at least. So we will try to meet once a month, it's the same as the session once a month, uh, and create some uh, workshop slash tutorial slash introduction. Uh, so basically introducing how to program FPGA. Uh, if people are interested to build something on the top of those boards which with specific interface, uh, learning how to program uh, to drive an LCD, to do some analog measurement, uh, sound synthesis, and because those boards have also VGA and HDMI, is to create some uh, graphics, etc., etc. So the first few sessions will be probably just to introduce VHDL or very log. And the first session, uh, I don't know exactly the format, but people can come with a laptop, install the tool, and just simulate. Because we don't need really the hardware to to really do much. We can also import an image into the tool using the VHDL code, simulate what it would be the results then the image is basically created because we can input and out export also the, the data. So there could be some session where it's only a programming exercise without any hardware, then later we can have more uh, evolved uh, to go depending on the interest of people. And, uh, I mean, if you have done uh, VHDL and FPGA school, <laughs> so maybe uh, some of us were already done 